So I'm over here at the David Rumsey Map Collection website and I found this beautiful old map of Milan, Italy from the early 19th century. And I wanna use this as my base map inside of my GeoLayers 3 project in Adobe After Effects. Now there are two different ways you can do this. If you look up here, there's a button that says View and Geo Referencer. So this is actually already geo referenced and you can connect it directly to the GeoLayers 3 map comp inside of Adobe After Effects. However, this requires a premium map tiler subscription. So I'm not gonna show you how to do that. We're gonna focus on how you can do this manually, which only takes a few steps and you'll be able to use this with other map imagery. So the first thing you wanna do is click on this export button right here. You have a variety of different resolutions. Grab the largest resolution and go ahead and download that. The higher the resolution, the further you'll be able to zoom in and have crispy, crisp pixels. Okay, now I'm inside of Adobe After Effects and I've already set up my GeoLayers 3 map comp here and I've imported this map. So I'm gonna grab the Milan Italy map and bring it into my timeline here and place it at the very top. The way we line this up is we simply are going to manually line up some specific landmark. And if I go over here, right away I can see this Duomo. This is a really famous spot of Milan and this is actually still going to be a modern contemporary landmark. So we can definitely use this. Now, what I wanna do is actually move my anchor point so that it lines up with the Duomo so that when I line it up with the underlying base map of my GeoLayers map, when I scale or rotate or reposition, it's all going to happen from this anchor point, which is actually right here. So to move the anchor point, I just click on this button right here, the pan behind tool. You can use keyboard shortcut Y and then grab this and I'm gonna place it over somewhere on the Duomo. Maybe we can put it on the bottom corner here. Now I'm gonna turn the visibility of this off and we wanna to navigate to Milan with our GeoLayers map. To do that, you can do a keyword search for Milan, download that here. Now you can double click and zoom on it. Now I'm gonna zoom in here and as I zoom in, right away you'll see a, basically a label for our landmark here, which is Duomo. So I'm gonna zoom in here and there, I can see it right in my preview, the Duomo. Now I'm gonna control click our finalize button so that it downloads a high resolution frame here of our map comp view. Okay, so there is our Duomo. Now I'm gonna turn the visibility of our map back on. Now it's a matter of lining this up. So what you wanna do is hit the T key, which will bring up opacity, and then you can start to play with the opacity so you can see your underlying layer. We can actually turn this way, way down and now you can still see the anchor point of our layer. You can drag this over the edge. And now if I bring the opacity back up, we can start to see the size difference here. So to bring up the scale, hold shift and hit S and that'll bring up scale in addition to opacity. So now we can start to scale it up and you can hold the control key to get more granularity and precision. It's gonna go a little bit more slowly, which is important to know when you're working in GeoLayers. Once I've got it roughed in, I'm going to parent this to my map comp anchor and I'm gonna turn on 3D. So that will now attach it to the map. And even further than that, I can create a map feature based on this right now. So if I click right here and then basically click on our, our map image and hit the plus icon and say feature from layer, that adds the bounds of this image to our map. Now if I double click this, it's gonna perfectly center this up in our map comp so we can see the full view here. And I'm gonna finalize this frame and we can see how close we are with the alignment of this image. Now if I just toggle the visibility off and on, you can really see on this little heart shape here that we need to scale it down quite a bit. So one point of reference that might be good for this is this ellipse right here. So if I turn the opacity back down a little bit, you can see, there we go. So I'm gonna grab the scale again, and you'll notice now the scale is at 0.3, and that's because it's parented to our map comp anchor. So I'm gonna turn this off again, and just be sure that you don't zoom your map, otherwise it'll be thrown out of sync. And now using the control key will be a little bit easier, and it looks like we also need some rotation. So I'm gonna hold shift and hit R, and I'm gonna rotate this a little bit here. And now it is indeed looking like it's lining up pretty well here. And now if I reattach this again to my map comp anchor and turn on 3D, you can now see that I can fly in and change the pitch and the bearing. 
and I can get in nice and close to our map and create some beautiful animations. Now, in this particular example, this map lined up pretty perfectly with our base map, but this is not always the case, especially if you're doing smaller scale maps like of countries, you're going to need to further manipulate the raster image to make things line up. And the best way to do that is using this puppet tool right here. So I've already got this attached to the map, which is perfectly fine. Let's say I want to tweak it a little bit further. Let's say certain areas on the edges are not lining up. What I can do is just add a puppet pin right here. So a puppet position pin, grab this here, and then place a pin. So I'll put a pin right here on the Duomo and put it right here. And that adds this puppet effect right here. And you can see our pin right here. This is really render intensive. First of all, because my image is such a high resolution image. And when it adds this puppet effect, it just really slows everything down. So I'm going to turn the resolution of my composition window down to quarter just to speed things up. Now with this selected, I'm going to add other puppet pin tools or uh, other puppet pins. So I've already added this one. Now if I add others right here, what this will allow me to do is I can now manipulate this image and kind of like deform it. You can see it's like freaking out my system here. But as I move these other pins, it's going to allow me to basically, you know, put this image however or wherever I want it. One thing that might be helpful is to download a lower resolution version of this image, maybe not extra, extra large, maybe just extra large will do the job. And at some point, really, if you're distorting your image out this much, you might not want to use it as a base map, you might simply be using this as a reference to trace out some information or just draw out some shape elements. Okay, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to learn more about GeoLayers 3, check out my GeoLayers 3 Masterclass, which is linked in the video description. And if you really want to get hardcore with mapping, check out my Patreon page. Everything is linked down there in the video description. All right, I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.